Thanks very much, uh, Laura and John, for the session. So, uh, and, and thank you, David, wherever you are. I haven't uh, spotted you in the crowd, but for the opportunity to be here and speak this morning as a farmer. So um, I'm hoping that my session uh, today is, is a good frame for, I guess, where we're trying to get to over uh, by the end of the day with the discussion uh, this afternoon in the workshop. So the situation, and I think we heard this well from um, Murray uh, particularly yesterday, is it's, it's tough out here, which is why we're here at the symposium, isn't it? Uh, it's tough on farm. Um, I think an interesting stat is uh, Dairy and Z's view from the Cowshed Report last year, which um, was particularly topical for me, having just come off an uphill looking at farmer thinking under pressure. And they highlighted in, in that uh, view from the Cowshed Report that 62% of uh, respondents had experienced or knew someone with a uh, mental health issue in that last year. And that 60% of those people were highlighting regulation change uh, as a big driver. So our farm systems, they've become an incredibly complex and interconnected system of trade-offs, particularly in the last 10 years. And I, I think of Newton's law, uh, third law, which is for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And I think that that is, is, is really coming to the fore now on our farms as we think about how do we deal with changes perhaps in stocking rate, uh, in nitrogen, uh, how we may incorporate alternate species, but still fundamentally maintaining the profitability that we need. Uh, very difficult to have one without the other. So the fundamentals of, of my pasture system, I feel, are under intense pressure. And I'll talk about that in the next slide. But one of the positives of that experience of a Nuffield and getting outside into the, or out, and sorry, into the world and, and looking back uh, into the New Zealand system is just how good we have actually got it here. You know, we have some of the best pastoral systems globally. And, and one of the fundamentals is that we can still control our feed costs. And I think we saw that yesterday with our presentations. So understanding this concept of pressure, I thought could be actually quite relevant to this symposium and what we're here to discuss around resilient pastures. So I identify that pressure is a global issue for people wellbeing during the Nuffield research. And pressure can be described uh, as the following. Uh, high stakes, small margins, uncertainty, fast change and judgment. And I see that as highly applicable for this discussion today. So I'll talk about high stakes in the next couple of slides, but small margins, we, we know we heard from John yesterday about the, the rate of change around plant breeding, and we know that a lot of our farm systems have small margins and hence the degree of productivity we need to get the returns that we do. We've got uncertainty around uh, seasonal climate and commodity cycles, and also the age and stage of our farmers. Fast change is coming with climate and regulation, and a really important point in this whole space of pressure for farmers is judgment. So we have judgment in terms of whether we're graze systems or we're starting to incorporate some form of structure for animals. We have judgment around wintering, which we're seeing in Southland. Uh, we have uh, the supplement versus pasture systems debate that's been raging forever. And then we've got the sort of judgment that comes with benchmarking and understand where, where you are with your peers. And, and a real issue I see coming in the future is the judgment that's going to sit around how do we deal with GE versus non-GE. So this symposium is really important and, and why I jumped at the opportunity as a farmer to be here to talk. Uh, and, and the things that I think are, are critically important for us is to be transparent around what the trade-offs are going to be in the future between animal, planet and system in terms of how achievable they are and that Newton's law of reaction. We need to be really clear around what are these value propositions. So in the nutrition space, around the amino acids, around how our food tastes, the mouth feel, those sorts of things, the nutrient density. The grazed versus grass-fed story, a lot of what I see with my work at Fonterra is it's a right to be in market, but it doesn't actually bring us a lot more than that. And then we've got this underlying issue, I think, as we look into the future around genetic modification um, and what that could do for methane. And what are our customers going to look to in the future? Are they going to actually flip from uh, planet positive in terms of a methane story and willing to accept GE? It's a big question for us. So that, that takes us to business models, and we're going to need to be really clear about those. And, and I think Fonterra's got a, a, a good example with its capital structure review right now, 
fundamentally, its milk supply is declining. That's why it needs to talk about capital structure and what's driving declining milk supply. A fair bit of it's actually pasture productivity. But we've got unique attributes, and we just need to constantly be aware of those. You know, the science system, what we hear uh, over the last couple of days, and, and seeing that as a farmer, to me, always just, I've, I'm so humbled by the, the amount of, uh, of skill and passion that we've got in our science system in the sector. Uh, our grazed systems, our low greenhouse gas footprint that we've talked about, our high nutrition story, and the great supply chain uh, that we rely on and has served us so well through COVID. So what can we do? So we need this clarity around the importance of pasture to our sectors. Uh, the grazed pasture and, and forage, in my mind, is kind of like the floor of a house, this wonderful house that we've built in terms of our agricultural systems. But a house and the floor that it sits on are only as strong as the foundations. And I kind of see that you guys in the room are these foundations. And these foundations, they're structural and they're interconnected. So my question is, are we interconnected enough? And I hope by the end of today we might be able to answer this. Um, you know, where's grazed pastures on our agendas uh, of our boards, of our senior leadership teams, of our policy people, and at our CRIs? I don't think it often features high enough on those boards. And when we think about where grazed pastures should sit in a risk matrix for us, I would see it as number two right behind people. Fundamentally, our whole businesses are being driven on it. So the question is, where is our resilient pastures and forage strategy as a sector? You know, who's going to be involved? Uh, you know, who are the stakeholders in that model? How is it going to work? You know, and where are the interconnections that we need to have? Who's going to be accountable? Who's going to own it? So I've just sort of highlighted the recognition gaps. And I, I guess what I heard a lot of yesterday being also discussed were the knowledge gaps. But I really wanted to reiterate that there's practice and execution gaps that are still very real out there on farm. Measurement and information in terms of understanding our swards, whether it's simply dry matter growing, ME, um, digestibility, uh, sward composition, very little's changed in that in a long time. You know, those tools aren't that easy for a farmer. And, and why I raise that is waste. As regulations coming in and, and dictating sort of how farm systems can be run, uh, and we've got the variability of in, in increasingly changing climate coming in, we're seeing more waste. So how do, we, how do we deal with waste? I guess the exciting part for me around that is, is kind of considering the future. Uh, and it, it was a privilege to do the time abroad on the Nuffield Scholarship and... Uh, and kind of see the technology that's out there in the world of agriculture. And I spent a lot of time actually in the US in the latter part of my Nuffield, in the Midwest, and in the, in the space of cropping, I suppose, and was simply blown away by the amount of data that they collect, uh, by the technology that features in, in places like their combines, but, but more the data analytics that occurs behind the scenes on that in terms of hybrid development and, and general system development. So I just wanted to flag today with you all that I think we have quite a bright future in the technology space. And one example that is fascinating for me as a dairy farmer right now is Halter, which is the concept of the kind of putting a, a collar on a cow and having a virtual fence or boundary, uh, but also collecting all that information about grazing and those sorts of things. Um, Halter, to me, could actually almost flip farm systems on its head in terms of the opportunity to have cows grazing uh, in the right place. Uh, with the right forage uh, at the right time of day, and also perhaps having the right cow grazing the right forage and a different cow grazing a different forage. So th th those are exciting, but they're going to rely on sensors, and they're going to rely on, on that kind of IoT or Internet of Things uh, really coming to the fore. And, and for that, we're going to need good data networks, and we're going to need connectivity. One of the things I saw abroad is that in this space, uh, that technology is often owned by the big agricultural corporations. And the costs come to the farmer in terms of sort of a subscription model. And they also get locked into this kind of flywheel of technology change. And one of the things I think is very important in this symposium to think about as we look into the future and consider technology is how we're going to actually own that, how we're going to have some control of that cost in our farm systems. Uh, without it, uh, quite often those productivity gains, those margins will be passed on to somebody else. So I told you it's going to be reasonably quick, Laura. Uh, so in, in summary, um, I, I think that we can look at this topic that we're discussing uh, through the lens of pressure. 
And so that's around the high stakes that I talked about. Uh, it's around the small margins, it's around the uncertainty, it's around the fast change and around the judgment. And I think if we start to pull some of these things under those headings, it gives us some kind of scope to understand it better. I'd, I'd really like us to place pasture as the floor of this great agricultural house that we've built here in New Zealand. But always ask ourselves, are we focused enough on the foundations of that floor? We need to own the problem at the correct level, and I challenge our senior leadership, our, our, our people concerned with risks in our business, have we got pasture at the correct place in those discussions? And we need to create, ultimately from that, a much more connected strategy that we all own and are accountable to. Practice and execution gaps are very real out there on farm. Uh, we've, uh, in my mind, still got a long way to go. Uh, but overall, for me, the future is exciting. We just need to own the outcomes. Thank you.